OpenAI has revealed that ChatGPT will be able to speak. This I'm looking forward to. Dave. We might be living Stanley Kubrick's dream or nightmare. Apparently we'll become enlightened to the point of reaching past machine level. If the CIA is watching, thank you for your service, I think. What's going on guys? Always, always great to see you. Have you ever wanted to invest in AI? Well, you might just get the chance because apparently OpenAI, the people that chat GPT are going to be selling some share. And this possible share sale is going to put the valuation of the company at somewhere, potentially somewhere between 80 and 90 billion dollars. Insane. Triple from what it was worth or valued at back in April, which was roughly $30 billion. So what's impressive about all this is that this giant, giant valuation, of course, comes behind basically the backbone of all this AI mania is, well, it's data, it's knowledge, but where does it get this data and knowledge from? Well, it gets it from all of us. And that is absolutely fascinating because essentially a lot of the data, a lot of the online data being used by AI to learn stuff is basically copyright infringement. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. So potentially OpenAI is one giant scam. At least that's what a lawsuit says because they're being sued by the author's guild. And this lawsuit is saying that at the heart of all this algorithmic utopia that is AI, part of this algorithm is nothing more than systemic theft on a massive scale, which makes sense actually. But honestly, I don't think anything's gonna happen to Sam Altman's billions or Bill Gates's billions because of course, they'll just pay these people off. So this class action lawsuit filed just a few days ago due to its alleged misuse of copyrighted material in training the AI. Cointelegraph quoted the plaintiff's argument saying these algorithms are at the heart of defendants' massive commercial enterprise. Makes sense. They want to make money. OpenAI wants to make money. And at the heart of these algorithms is the massive systemic theft. The Authors Guild, which is suing OpenAI, they went as far as posting a guide on X, Twitter, about how authors can protect their writings, their works, from AI web crawlers. It almost sounds like something out of the Matrix. Pretty funny. So they make a lot of good points about AI basically stealing knowledge and that's how it's trained. But at the end of the day, they're just gonna get paid out and well, they probably deserve it if they do. But of course, all this is like gray legal area because well, it's all new. These models can basically hunt around for data sets and including social media, even YouTube, and essentially any other platform there is. Pretty, pretty fascinating. AI web crawlers. So watch out for that. And now AI has the power to search the live internet before it was capped at data sets, information only available up to 2021. But now ChatGPT can browse the web live and provide, of course, up-to-date info on basically anything. And that's pretty, pretty impressive potentially scary. It can only be attributable to human error. I do wonder now if they're trying to sell the shares because ChatGPT has been updated. That data set was only up until September, 2021. So in terms of data, that's pretty outdated. So now they're trying to triple their valuation because well, ChatGPT is updated. And it is now impressive that ChatGPT can provide up-to-date information, search the internet live, while it's looking for whatever answer you're looking for. And of course, this enhanced up-to-date version is being rolled out to those who are subscribed, to the Plus and Enterprise users, to those that are paying the bills, essentially. It did put a post on X that it would be made available to everyone eventually soon. So, yeah, we'll see. Try it out. Anyways, the company said, ChatGPT can now browse the internet to provide you with current and authoritative information, complete with direct links to sources, authoritative information. But my favorite part, my favorite part comes that OpenAI has revealed that ChatGPT will be able to speak. This I'm looking forward to. Good evening, Dave. How you doing, Hal? Essentially, you're gonna be able to have a conversation with ChatGPT. This is either really awesome, really funny, or really, really scary. Now, of course, there's already kind of other versions of this in play. Siri, for example, Alexa, 
It's already out there. It's just that ChatGBT, well, it's kind of encompassing a lot of different things. I hope you can put Hal's voice on there. That would be pretty funny. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. Of course, all these updated capabilities only available to those that are poning up the monthly subscription. Apparently, it'll be so advanced. You can take a picture and be able to discuss certain qualities of the image. And you can have a live conversation with ChatGPT about the picture, the landmark, the history, whatever. So we are really getting close to reaching 2001 Space Odyssey level. How we might be living Stanley Kubrick's dream or nightmare. Of course, not all the founders are happy with OpenAI, including, of course, everyone's favorite spaceman. Earlier this year, Elon Musk tweeted out against Sam Altman's basically hijacking OpenAI. Apparently, he was also hijacking all the data from the internet. <laughs> it's how they train ChatGPT. Anyways, Elon did say OpenAI was created as an open source. Interesting which is why he named it OpenAI, meant to be a nonprofit company to serve as a counterweight to Google. Boy, that didn't happen. And he says that now it's a closed system, a closed source, maximum profit company, absolutely maximum profit company. Pretty darn good job of that too. He says that effectively it is controlled by Microsoft. I feel much better now. But anyways, it's not just Elon, it's not just Sam Altman, it's not just Sequoia Capital, all these guys investing in AI. It's also our favorite protector of the US. If the CIA is watching, thank you for your service, I think. And of course, they're doing this because, well, because everyone else is doing it around the world. And I'm sure they've been doing it for a long time too. Bloomberg wrote about it. It's all about competing with China and their AI. Of course, it all has to do with accessing more information easily. The director of the CIA's open source division, kind of ironic name, isn't it? Central Intelligence Agency slash open source enterprise division. It's kind of an oxymoron there. But anyways, director Randy Nixon said the source information can be sifted and returned to individual intel analysts faster than ever before. Maybe the agency should be renamed Central AI, there's gotta be a catchy, ironic name in there somewhere. If you can think of one, put it in the comments cause that would be hilarious. But think about it, they can literally search and search millions and millions and millions of classified docs and at the same time, cross-reference that across the world, across all of social media apps in the world. Pretty, pretty crazy amount of data, I suppose. The same director went on to say, our collection can just continue to grow and grow and grow with no limitations. No limitations other than how much it costs. Pretty interesting wording there. It's like this infinite growth of what? I don't know. Going on to say that this AI will be available across the board to all the agencies in the government, which, you know, makes sense. Someone at the NSA, a director of research of some sort, Gilbert Herrera, he was quoted as saying, the intelligence community needs to essentially take benefits of AI without violating privacy. Eh, probably not gonna happen. But this line is kind of, uh, gives you an idea of where they're at. This guy said, if we wanna realize the full power of AI, for other applications, what does that mean? Then we're probably going to have to rely on a partnership with industry. Huh? So corporates and agencies working together hand in hand, sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Well, who didn't see that coming? They even have a post about it. Yep. Apparently the Chinese have developed some kind of AI that is so powerful that it developed an AI prosecutor. Sounds made up. And apparently it can press charges. <laughs> This is so, this is ridiculous. This, this looks like an Onion article. It's, it's pretty funny. I'm pretty sure these guys are dead serious. Even if they're exaggerating their claims, I'm sure the Chinese are dead serious about what they're doing. But it's not just the intelligence agencies in the world or the country's billionaires getting in on the AI game. It's also the scammers. Apparently there's something called Worm GPT. Slashnet had this article on the dark web chat GPT alternatives. If you're into scams and you wanna basically write phishing emails. So apparently even the scammers are using AI and there's a fraud GPT. What a great name, fraud GPT. Anyway, Slashnet highlights that the cyber criminals can use tech to automate creation of highly convincing 
fake emails personalized. Apparently Worm GPT has a range of features like unlimited character support, chat memory retention, and code formatting capabilities. Pretty impressive for scamming AI. <laughs> See, what's interesting about this is that they say that Worm GPT trained on a diverse array of data sources, of course, concentrated on malware related data makes sense, but that the specific data sets utilized during the training process for this Worm GPT remain confidential. Pretty freaking interesting. I have a theory. Why doesn't the CIA, right, if they're making their own AI, why don't they put out an AI in the dark web like Worm GPT or Fraud GPT and basically catch the bad guys with their pants down? Literally red-handed right there using, I mean, that, that almost sounds too simple, like cartoon level simple, you know? But maybe they are doing it, I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's OpenAI, Sam Altman, that just wanna take over the world, of course, with ChatGPT. But they also wanna take over the world in the crypto game. Why? Well, world coin. So I don't know, to me, everything the guy makes or is working on has this sort of like dystopian future vibe to it. It's a little creepy when you're scanning people's irises, giving them a few bucks, and essentially suggesting that at some point, everyone will need to verify themselves via biometrics. So I don't know what is up with the Sam Altman guy. It gives you the creepy vibes, you know? The whole concept behind scanning the iris and throwing you a few crypto dollars was called World ID Project after all. It just has those vibes, creepy vibes. So World ID Project, World Coin, and of course, besides giving off these creepy vibes, the way that they use language, the way that they promote their products saying, I venture to say that he's doing something similar to Scam Sam. The reason why is because effective altruism. There's always these weird promotions of altruism of some sort. For example, Sam Altman has talked about solving income inequality by handing people money, world coin. Where does that come from? Well, they can just print it, literally. World coin is minted by themselves. <laughs> it makes no sense. So essentially the CEO of this company has anointed himself the power, the power to create a so-called currency while he's promoting a world ID, a world coin, and universal basic income. Pretty interesting. And if you think world coin is a joke, well, it's, think again, it's listed in multiple, multiple cryptocurrency exchanges all over the world. So people are putting their real, literally real hard earned money for something that was printed, minted out of thin air by the CEO. It's pretty, pretty interesting. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Well, engineer Ray Kurzweil predicted that by 2045, ChatGPT potentially, or another version of ChatGPT, AI essentially, is going to reach the point of singularity. Apparently we'll become enlightened to the point of reaching past machine level. The point of technology reaching a level, such as where you recognize speech like a human, that speed of recognition and ability to translate, basically reaching a human level, but perform things faster. I've still got the greatest enthusiasm and confidence in the mission. So these guys are running a wicked, wicked game, and the investors are just piling in. They're making money for themselves and for anyone else who's investing with them. They're throwing money left and right at AI. And love it or hate it, AI is basically worming its way all sorts of commerce, all sorts of levels of interaction, taking over jobs, assisting people at their jobs currently, and maybe even helping the CIA. <laughs> but we all could see that coming, right? But not only has AI and OpenAI made Sam Altman, one of the founders, along with Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, and others, filthy rich, but, but this wealth and usage of the company has expanded massively to all aspects of basically society. So along with these guys getting filthy rich, it's also made Microsoft quite a bit of money. It's also made NVIDIA a very, very rich company because they're basically ahead of the game. The GPUs are used for AI and they're the only name in the game. But let's uh, look into this a little more because I think it's pretty, pretty darn fascinating. And let's not forget that Microsoft owns 49% of the whole company, OpenAI. Damn Bill Gates, man, 
So after the launch, OpenAI was the fastest growth application to be used ever in human history, reaching 100 million users in two months, which is pretty insane, beating out even TikTok. So huge and setting records across the board including in valuation. So the company does make money by charging 20 bucks a month if you want a subscription for the GPT-4, the Advanced Public Access AI. And of course they run licensing programs to further make more money, supposedly reaching a billion dollars this year with of course the trend being that, well, they're going to make a lot more money in the near future. I've still got the greatest enthusiasm and confidence in the mission. Well, if they start selling more shares, well, of course, it's going to make them even more rich. But this time, they're going to allow current employees to sell their existing shares, as opposed to the company issuing new shares to investors, which would make the employees working there. According to Wall Street Journal, the valuation of $80 billion to $90 billion dollars would essentially make this one of the most highly valued global startups behind SpaceX and TikTok. TikTok, <laughs> man. So back in April, OpenAI closed a deal selling around $300 million worth of shares. This is how they got that almost $30 billion valuation, which was of course insane to begin with, but now they're getting valued even higher. Now what's funny about that is one of the companies that invested in AI is Sequoia Capital, which also invested in FTX, Sam Bankman Free. So that is my latest ChatGPT update. They're getting updated. Real live up to date internet browsing by ChatGPT. Anyways, guys, sorry for the long video. If you stuck around, thanks for watching. But that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to smash a like. Please do subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.